we have here a Pi 9 inch television receiver it was the first model that was released in the UK after the end of the Second World War this particular model and this actual set was p purchased by a former customer of mine when I had my radio and television shop in South London uh, they bought it to watch the Victory Parade in 1946 they were going to buy a television set before the war but uh, unfortunately the television service was closed down from 1939 to 1946 so they were unable to do so and as soon as the war ended that's the first thing that they did they went out and bought this little pie now it's a significant improvement over the pre-war model the uh, war brought developments in radio, radar high frequency VHF applications and circuitry were vastly improved and the result of that was this uh, TV receiver using the technologies of the time it still gives a remarkably good picture it's comparable probably with a black and white set of today That's one of the small portables that uh, I think you can still buy it's a 405 line receiver of course it's 405 um, the original system A British television system it uses a rather dangerous mains derived high voltage system supplying 5000 volts to the cathode ray tube from directly from the mains via a transformer this was the technology that was common of the day before we had what we call line flyback EHT that was a lot safer and it's a lot cheaper too the control panel in the front there that little slide down cover that covers the preset controls very very stable It'll, you can watch it all evening without any picture loss of synchronization the other controls are the volume con control on the right and the on off and the brightness control on the left uh, I will take the back off and show you what it, the, the actual internals are like and then I'll switch it on and you can see it actually produce a picture right with the back removed of the little Pi D16T I'll try and explain some of the circuitry of it to you uh, we'll start with the power pack which is in the bottom of the cabinet it's two chassis the time bases and the, and the radio frequency section are on the top and the main power supply is on the bottom your main lead comes in 240 volts goes up to the on off switch on the brightness control comes back to the power supply there's a very large mains transformer on here it supplies valve heater current there's quite a number of valves in the set it supplies high tension current which is rectified by a valve around the back here around about 480 volts for the anodes of the valves but the most important part it also supplies about 5000 volts AC which is coming out of this terminal here it feeds a rectifier valve on the back here high voltage rectifier on HVR2 mullard it's then smoothed by a smoothing capacitor over there and comes out as 5000 volts DC approximately on this lead here they're the mains fuses and they're the mains voltage selector taps because in the UK in 1946 right up until around about 1963 we had various mains voltages anything from 195 to 250 AC, this will only operate on AC of course so that's the power supply I will now show you the main function receiver on the top there right this is the top of the chassis this chassis is just above the power supply the aerial lead comes in here it's a TRF receiver that means a tuned radio frequency it's fixed tuned to Alexandra Palace which was the only television station we had in England the vision frequency was 45 megacycles and the sound frequency was 41.5 the sound and the vision channels are amplified with these red EF50 valves they were a wartime development used extensively in radar and other high frequency applications very very well made strip there that was actually virtually an un unmodified radar receiver on the left here you've got the line output stage that scans the picture from side to side you've got a vertical stage vertical time based stage over the back here that scans the picture horizontally the high voltage is fed in on the tube here the tube is an MW227 which is a Mullard Philips Continental of course but we called it was called uh, Mullard over in the UK and that's basically the D16T now I will 
turn it round and turn it on and you I'll show you maybe a bit of test the old fashioned test card C or D and some music and it'll give you some idea of how it works right let's turn the pie on uh, and see what sort of a picture we can get out of it. It is absolutely a brilliantly sharp picture. It's difficult to reproduce with these modern cameras because the exposure tends to average out the scene. So if you have room lighting on, uh, the camera tends to set on, uh, on the room lighting rather than on the very small area of the picture. So I've zoomed in a little bit and we'll... Um, turn it on and then I'll turn the main room lights out and you'll get s some idea of just how good it is right we'll turn it on turn the brightness up a little bit takes a few minutes to well a few seconds to warm up it's valve of course the test card, the old BBC One test card. Nice sound. I'll turn the room lights out and then you can get some idea. Ooh, crackly volume control there. Something I missed there but never mind. That's the picture. If I turn the brightness up, if I turn the brightness up, you'll see the tremendous amount. It'll completely overload the camera um, settings there. So we'll keep it fairly low, and that will give you some idea of what the picture is like. The overhaul of this was—it wasn't that difficult. It was mainly on the high voltage side. The main 5000 volt smoothing capacitor was short circuit and that blew the mains fuses when I turned it on first of all soon replaced that and it was generally capacitors that had gone leaky uh, over the years it's a very very old receiver and the insulation of um, components in those days was very uh, limited to wax, pitch, tar and paper and of course over the years dampness gets into the components and causes problems but they're easily replaced with modern com modern ones with, I think about 25 were replaced in all and away it went and it's been like this now for some well quite a number of years so that's the Pi D16T it's one of the oldest TVs in my collection and is an extremely nice receiver hope you enjoyed it <laughs>